today on Divorce Court. We spend too much time making videos that make no sense. It might not make sense to you, but it makes sense to the people that I'm doing the videos for. That's the whole reason I'm doing it. You should put your parties together. I feel like they're out of place. Going out with your friends most of the time, you could be working, making money. I can that I'm just 23 years old. I should be focusing on what I really want to do in life. So. I understand that, but you always need a backup plan. I just feel as if you just let me do me sometimes and you just trust me that everything's going to be okay. All right, well, we can just let Judge Lynn decide. Okay, wrap it up then. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Ayanna Parks and Christopher McClendon. The two of you have been together for two and a half years. You're both 23 years old. It says on my paper here that you've come here for my best advice to keep you together, but I'm not quite sure that's exactly what you want. I think you want a little more than that, but I'll put that on the back burner for right now. And I'll start out with you, Ms. Parks. Why don't you tell me why we're here today? We have a problem with communication. Mm -hmm. And his focus isn't where it needs to be. Where do you think his focus needs to be? His priorities are being Instagram famous instead of trying to get into school. Basically, kind of on my level. I feel mm. like we're not on the same level. Well, are you in school? Yes. OK, are you in college? Yes. What, what are you studying? Criminology. Criminology? Yes. What do you want to do when you get out? Work with ATF in the field, policing, then try to do ATF. Well, you go ahead with your bad self. <laughs> Mr. McClendon? How you doing? Why don't you talk to me about your dreams? OK, well, um, first I want to say, before we even got together, she already knew what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So um, it, sh I shouldn't, it shouldn't have been surprised to that this is what I want to do in my life. Right. Um, as far as Instagram go, I just feel as if that's a very good platform for me to, uh, to build on what I really want to do in my life. Um, as far as being on social media, you know, being on social media well, and doing things well, like that. What do you do on your page? I mean, what do you, are you selling something? Or... Um, that's, that's the goal. Um, considering the people that I've, I've been around, you know, they're making a lot of thousands and thousands of dollars. They're living, they're living their life just off of doing Instagram yeah, videos. Yeah, but I want to know how that works. Uh, so pretty much, uh, it goes off by how many followers you have. Uh-huh. So, uh, so like right now, I have 14K. Um, in the Instagram world, you know, that might, might be a lot, but it's a start, in my opinion. If I went on your, your page, what would I see? Oh, uh, you'll probably see me dancing with my shirt off. Uh, you probably see we me. We have an example? Oh, I don't... Oh, see, see, right here, I'm, I'm in the bathroom with some toilet tissue. I was doing a parody. But, like, if you actually see the real video, you understand? I got that video. I, did, got... I didn't understand that. Oh, it, it got, that video got 50,000 videos on YouTube. Uh, 50,000 views. views. Yes, ma'am. So how many followers do you need before advertisers start knocking? Uh. Well, as far as advertisers go, you need to at least, at least start off at least at 30K. Uh-huh. So, I mean, everybody I'm around, they got millions of followers. So I feel like if they can get to that point, then I'm, I can then get to Then why the not you? Exactly. Now, if this doesn't work out, do you have a fallback? Because I'm not, not going to step on anybody's dream. And this is a whole new age, you know. I'm sure they told Zuckerberg, don't leave <laughs> Harvard and go with this silly thing. Right. And look at, him, look at him now. So I'm not stepping on your dream, but do you have a fallback? Uh, as far as the fallback go, I feel like you shouldn't have a plan B because if you got a plan B, you'll always you'll be more focused on. Well, if this doesn't work, then I have, I have something to fall back on. So if I just stick with my plan A, then I feel like that'll work. Mr. McClendon, this was my plan B. It's not bad. What? You, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, you, my plan A was to be in a position. It really was my plan A. But when I saw that one gonna work out for me, I went to plan B, and look at this. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it, it's logic. It's, it's rationality. It's grown folk business to say plan A, plan B. No, seriously. I'm not, I'm not saying don't not do plan A, but you always got to have a plan B, because yeah, you never know. That makes sense. Yeah, uh, you just shut, <laughs> yeah, you just shut me up. That's, it as husbands speak for, be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. McClendon, what do you see as the primary problem in this relationship, simply that she doesn't support your dream? I don't think she's not that she doesn't support me. I just don't feel like she understands um, what exactly I'm trying to do. Uh, and I, I try to put her around the environment, but it's just not clicking to her. Mm -hmm. I just feel like she'd rather me just, you know, work my nine to five and just be miserable mm -hmm. in the house all day. So do you have a nine to five in addition to this work, or do you solely use 
this um, work? I recently had one, but I, I quit because I wanted to focus on what I wanted to do. Because mm. it was just, I felt like it was in a way. Is there a way to get a part-time job and do what you got to do just so you can bring in money in the interim? Uh, I do that. I do. I have a part-time job. Oh, okay, cool. So you're self-supporting? -support, support you're self-sufficient? Yes, ma'am. Is he self-sufficient? He's self-sufficient. Why would you leave him alone? Thank you. Because it's not, it's more, it's like, he does that 30% of the time, but he records. What else is he doing? I mean, he's recording. Like, he does his videos with his friends all the time. That's part of his work. Well, he coming can, up light in his parts over there. You know, you, I, I, I get it. Wow. I mean, absolutely just wow. And, you know, with wow, Ms. Parks, you can go anywhere you want. And I'm not, nothing against him, but you can't make somebody else live your dream. He has to live his dream. Now, if you want to be with him, you got to be cool with his dream, but he can't be on your time period and on, on, on your dream arc. Everybody has their own arc. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what else is the problem? Communication. Tell me about that. We don't communicate, and if we argue about it, we don't sit there and talk about it. We yell. Mm -hmm. And so that makes us just not want to talk at all. What's the last argument you had that turned into a, a screamer? Petty things, and it's not. Give even me an example. Serious, Mr. McClendon, go right ahead. Uh, we got in a whole argument about uh, she not wanting me to use a dishwasher, and I just feel like it's a dishwasher. She was like, "Well, they don't get the dishes clean," so she wanted me to hand wash all the dishes, and we had a whole dishwasher right there. And I didn't understand that. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, I can I can understand if I said, you know, I can clean the dishes off, and there's nothing, there's no food on it, then I can put it in the dishwasher and let it run. But she don't even want to use the dishwasher. You know, it's like little stuff like that. I just don't understand it. And then it's like, and then it's another stuff where it's like she, I can't even get on a bed without taking all my clothes off. I gotta take off all my clothes just to get on a bed. Just to get on a bed. All of them? All of my no. clothes. Well, I mean, my boxes. But, but why can't he sit on the bed with his clothes on? Because you're outside all day, sitting in public, dirty places, and then you wanna sit in the bed that you lay in. I uh -huh. mean, that's kind of like a phobia for me. I just don't like that. Does she have a lot of phobias? Yeah, a lot of them. You got a lot of quirks over there, Mrs. Barks? No. I oh, like you're reading queen. a little quirky to me. What other things do you two argue about? He doesn't listen to me. About he, he what? Feels like I try to like just voice my opinion, mm -hmm. and he calls it nagging. But I just want to, you know, get tell him how I feel, and he just thinks I'm nagging. What do you think she nags you about? Just anything, anything like social media, anything that has anything to do with what I want to do in my life. And like, I listen to her input, but it's like, I kind of already got the plan. And it's just like, if you could just trust me and just know that I, that I know what I'm doing, then I'll be good, it would mm -hmm. be good. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel. But she, I feel like she just, she not there as far as trust level goes because in her eyes, she, she doesn't really see, I guess because she don't see the money coming in, she feels as like I'm not making any progress. But you see the progress? Yes, ma'am, I do. Okay. I also understand that the two of you don't trust each other, so we're gonna move on to that subject matter. I asked my roommate to meet him to get the dog to take back home. I guess he kept her number, and I, when I went through his phone, they were, you know, exchanging text messages. Hey, how you doing? You want to go out? Uh, Mr. McClendon, that's a little suspect there. I mean, it wasn't even like that, to be honest with you. Well, what was it like? Ms. Parks, you say that you don't trust Mr. McClendon because he's awfully flirty with women online. Why don't you tell me what your concerns are in that regard? So if he posts a video and females will comment under it, he'll feel the need to, you know, post, you know, heart eyes back. And I feel the need that you, he doesn't need to respond to every, every female that posts on his page. Does he respond to everybody or just every woman? I feel like it's every woman, like. I feel like. That's what people tell me when they really don't think it's true, but that's what's bothering them. Is it every person or is it every woman? I mean, if it's his friends, he'll, he'll respond back to them. But if it's a girl who sends, like, hard eyes, I feel like there's no need to no respond. No need to respond. To Mr. McClendon, uh, so what is your position? Am I, you know, I feel as if most of the people that do comment, uh, I don't say anything back unless I know who they are. Or unless I feel like if it's like a somebody who's supporting me and has been supporting me and has always under my comments, I'll, I'll respond back with something 
the most friendliest thing I can respond back to. Mm -hmm. That's just how I see it. Uh, and somebody gave me some hard eyes the other day, and I responded back with a, with a smiley face and some laughing emojis. And I just, like, I just responded back because I knew who the person was, you know, and we've done work together. So if I didn't respond back, I would it would have been a dang, so. Now, Ms. Parks, give me something else. Has he ever done anything, online or otherwise, that makes you think he's cheating on you? Anything. There was this one time he had my dog, my puppy, and mm -hmm. I was at work. So I asked my roommate to meet him to get the dog to take back home. Mm -hmm. Come to find out, I guess he kept her number. And I, when I went through his phone, they were, you know, exchanging text messages. Just like communicating, just, you know, hey, how you doing? You want to go out? And at this point, I'm just like, uh, Mr. McClendon, that's a little suspect there. I mean, it wasn't even like that, to be honest with you. Well, what was it like? It was just, it was more like a, you know, she had my dog that, you know, I was trying to figure out who she was. And it's not like we was flirting or anything. I just wanted to get to know the person and have my dog. That's all. Oh, you do. can't even keep the smile off <laughs> your face while you're saying it. That, that story was so light and so tired, you couldn't even tell it exactly. without smiling. That was pitiful. You know you were wrong. You were just poking out there around a little bit, see see what might happen. Isn't that what happened? I mean, her friend, I did. Yeah, that's what happened. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, I know. He took her out too. He took her out. It was the Applebee's. That doesn't matter where it is. I am serious. <laughs> Two for twenty. We're moving on. If we go out, most of the time I pay, and then I find out that. One of his roommates couldn't pay the rent, so he pitches in, and I'm wow, confused because how are you able to help pay your friend's rent, but you can't take me out and can't get your car fixed? Mr. McClendon, you want to respond to that? How would you feel about your partner secretly taking your roommate out to dinner? Tell us what you think at facebook.com slash divorce court. Divorce court will be right back. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Divorce Court. Basically, what I'm getting from you, Ms. Parks, is you want him to become a more stable adult individual, that he needs to buy a reliable car, that he needs to pick up the bills. Are you paying for him? Are you, are you helping support him? How's the money working? If we go out, most of the time I pay. And then I find out that one of his roommates couldn't pay the rent. So he pitches in and I'm wow, confused. I'm confused because how are you able to help pay your friend's rent, but you can't take me out, able to take another female out and can't get your car fixed? <laughs> Mr. McClendon, you want to respond to that? Okay, so I live there. So if my if my roommate don't have the rent, then we ain't gonna. Then live you there haven't no got more. the rent. I'm just saying though, I want right. to go back to our home. Right. You know? That you, you understand that part? When the rent is off, they don't care who didn't pay it. They don't have the rent. He's got to have the rent in order to stay in the apartment. He'll get put out, evicted, if you don't pay all of the rent. They won't just evict the two people who kicked in their part. They evict you all. You get that part? Yes. Uh, as far as the taking her out and everything, uh, me personally, like, you know, she's more of a, you know, she likes simple things, but I just try to give her the best I can. So, you know, like, when I take her out to, you know, to the restaurant she want to go to, like, you know, just to take her out, you know, I usually pay, but, you know, if it's like it's a regular day and she feel like she want to go out to eat, then, you know, she'll pay for it or we'll split the bill, mm -hmm. you know, or, but she likes a drink. So, like, you know, those drinks cost like $15. Oh, sure. So it's like What I'm are you not... doing for what are you doing for money, uh, Ms. Parks? I work in a major retail store. You guys can't afford going out for meals at all, whether they're expensive or not expensive, because neither one of you has enough money to do that. And you say you took her to a better restaurant than you took her girlfriend to. You're not supposed to be taking her girlfriend to any restaurant at all. That's the that's the point. The price point is irrelevant. It's, it, it's the nature of the contact that is inappropriate. Are, are you with me on that, Mr. McClendon? Yes, yes, ma'am. So now I'm going to tell you two what I think needs to happen because 
did you, how old were you when you two started dating? Well, we met in college. We was 18. 18? And, and she didn't Did you finish me. college? No, ma'am. I got, uh, I didn't finish. No, oh, okay. <laughs> it wasn't voluntary, you're leaving. No, ma'am. I was chasing after females. But she, she didn't, she didn't, when we was in college, you know, she didn't even give me the time of day. So it was like, it took me five years just to get her, and now she just. You don't wanna mess this up, though. No, I don't. Let me help you out. When your partner's funds are low, which is worse for him to do? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. I am truly conflicted. First of all, I think the two of you make a gorgeous couple. There's so much beauty and shine over here, I don't know what to do with it. She's just absolutely gorgeous. And I know why you chased after five years. She's worth chasing after for five years. But I don't want you to have buyer's remorse once you get her. So let me try to work with her a little bit and <laughs> fire you and see, see if we can work this out. Then I'm gonna work with him for you. Ms. Parks, he's 23 years old. You cannot command that he become a middle-aged adult overnight. 23 is for trying that long shot. 23 is for working on that dream. 23 is for he doesn't have any kids. He doesn't have any responsibility. This is the time to get his grind on and shoot for those stars. That's this process. That's what it is. What you're doing is you got a house built with a picket fence around and you're trying to stick him in it and you don't understand why he's not out there running with a lawnmower making it all okay for you. It's not his time for that. It's just not that time. So you need to back off, pursue your dream, keep your hand out and hold his, but don't be afraid to let it go if he should ever date around on you again, because you'll be free a minute and a half, and there'll be a line of 35 guys at your door, all of whom are willing to be your man. Do you understand that? Don't stick with a guy because he's the one you got. Stick with a guy because he's the one that's showing you he's the one that you want. You got me? Yes. Mr. McClendon, I'm gonna say this to you, but you know, hey, knock it out the park. I hope to see you with 10 million followers and all that kind of stuff, but you do need to have a backup plan because it may not happen for you for 20 years. It may not happen for 10 years. It may not happen at all. And you can't just be so focused, laser focused on one thing that, that you can't see the opportunities around it. If I had continued to try to be a doctor and failed calculus yet again, I wouldn't have saw this door over here that led to this life right here. You gotta have peripheral vision when you're looking around. So it's not saying plan B means I don't have faith in my plan A, it's just that I'm a grown person and I got vision and I can see breadth and depth and not just straight in front of me. She is a lovely individual, but if you're not willing to settle down, you need to let her know. And if you want her and you wanna keep her, you better be a right guy, and I mean an absolutely 100% right guy, cause she don't need to keep you. You with me on that? Yes, she does not need to keep you. And how dare you take out her friend? What are you thinking? <laughs> how know. tacky and low can you go? Yes. Well, you can go low. Well, I've, I've been here for a while, I've seen it. But I'm saying, you got something that special, you gonna make, one day after you've been married five years, you'll make beautiful children. But you gotta do the right thing right now every day. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. Let him dream, let him live. Don't work him like a job, but you keep your independence. Don't support him, don't move him in, and don't have his babies. You with me? Yes, ma'am. This matter is adjourned. <laughs>